welcome to another episode of our Drivers of Innovation podcast series. So today we have Lawrence Hu with us, an entrepreneur, startup entrepreneur here from Hong Kong. Welcome, Lawrence. Thank you. So uh, for the start, maybe you can introduce us a bit to what you are working on currently. Okay, sure. So uh, this is Lawrence and I'm a local startup entrepreneur. I've been into this space for like three, three and a half years almost. And then uh, I used to be like working in uh, banking, and then uh, but I have always been fascinated about technology scene. So I, at previously I actually started a, a development house in Hong Kong that uh, have a really small team of developers, and we work with uh, corporates and startups that uh, get me to know like better about the whole startup scene and community, and we build products for them. You're a developer yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm an engineer as well as. Uh, I mean, I do everything. I mean, I do the business side as well as the development side. For that, I mean, I actually learned about like how to build a startup from scratch. Uh, we were more a service-oriented company than a product one. Now I'm actually starting another startup on car sharing because uh, we see that like sharing economy is like picking up like in the whole world, but like Asia is always like the late adopters. So um, it is um, it's quite a different journey because now we are focusing on just one product and trying to work with like different people. So uh, our car sharing is actually, in essence, it's like car rental service, mm -hmm. but like we place a car at, at where you live or like where you work. So when you finish it, I mean, when we need it, you just like you book it and then you put it up and then you don't need a key or anything because uh, you can be controlled and open the doors uh, and start the engine through the app. And then, uh, and then so basically you book it, you go down there to drive it. When you finish, you return it back to the same place and then you just lock it through your phone. So I mean, we don't need to have any like service center to like uh, do all the ID verification that kind of stuff. So it saves your time and also quite seamless uh, in the experience. We are having a soft launch in in one of a uh, like private club in 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 Central. So uh, but we're just testing all the features and like whether and getting feedback from the user. And uh, hopefully we are going to have like a more public launch in the next half of the year. Yeah. No, that's good to know. So yeah. I may download that app also. But I'm a bit surprised. You um, you said that Asia is a late adopter, and usually I think um, definitely in Germany everybody is looking to Asia for the new cool thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. is coming from the east. So, yeah, yeah. So why why late adopter? Sharing economy by definition uh, by definition is like utilizing your idle assets, mm. and when you don't need it, so you can also make like a side income by doing that. Uh, I think because of the cultural part, like I mean, Chinese or Asian in general, it's not so comfortable sharing something private. Like if you buy a car, even that you're not using it, you might not be so comfortable sharing to any strangers. So we, we find it particularly difficult, like to, to in Asia when we talk to people that oh, what about you? You 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 can like rent out your car when you are not using it during the weekdays. So like this kind of peer to peer sharing is not really picking up them to the mainstream. If I look at my grandfather's generation, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was very important to have a car. You yeah. would not share it. It's, okay. it's because it's not just a utility. I think yeah, for my yeah, generation yeah. in Germany, it's much more the thing you need if you go if you buy a lot of things in the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Or you go on holidays. Yeah. But yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah. It's, I think uh, interesting to see these patterns emerge. But uh, but I would I'm, I'm be very interested. You said you you went into banking at first. Yeah. So that is. Um, a rather conservative job profile. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a, also a business environment. Why did you change? Well, I mean, like when I decided to quit, and then people actually think I'm nuts because my degree was on finance, but a lot more on the quantitative side. So um, I had more on a science background, on like mainly on the maths and stuff, and also like a bit of programming. So I actually I went to uh, like financial markets, uh, mainly on the derivative side. I see myself like doing the same thing every day. Like I mean, uh, yes, you earn a living, uh, you have quite a decent lifestyle. But I I, I don't know. I, I'm naturally I'm quite a good learner, and also I'm really eager to learn about new stuff, explore about new things. I feel too comfortable to be just doing the same thing over and over again. And so I didn't stay in the bank for a long time. And so I, I didn't have a lot of money to start my, my company, but like I, I feel that it was the right time to to really do something like when I was still young. Would you say that a lot of people in Hong Kong, like of your generation, yeah. have a similar mindset? Is that thing that is a new trend? There are definitely a lot more people in the startup space. It's a movie a trend because uh, there are more successful ones that um, people look up to. And then there are also local cases that, okay, someone actually 
builds a, a, a business from an app or, or from a website that actually can make a living and also can become very successful. I mean, in Hong Kong, there are not so many like uh, international cases about like like tech uh, startups that is very successful. But like there has been a quite a few that works very well locally and also they can expand to like other parts of uh, uh, Asia. I mean, one of the more famous ones from Hong Kong was the um, Nike get jokes like sharing site, and uh, they were really just like a bunch of young people, slightly older than me. Then uh, and then they uh, they were starting as a website for fun, and then they suddenly see oh, okay, it becomes a really popular website for people to share. So they're still running, and they are. I think they are the one one of the quite a big uh, startup business from Hong Kong. If you're in the startup scene, you might have heard of it, like some uh, video making ones called Go Animate. They are very big one, yeah. And uh, basically, if you want to make some kind of uh, startup animation, like product explainer for like 60 seconds, sometimes uh, with the media getting all the coverage about successful stories, I see that there are a lot more people getting into the space. And also, I think now university, uh, like even professors, see this like, oh, it might be an alternative career for all the students because at my time, everyone wants to just go to get uh, stable jobs like in the banks or in like big corporates or like going to the government to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moving a bit further down to uh, technological trends. Okay, um, and I think there Asia is really like leading the world, like coming up with new things, um, yeah. new inventions. Okay, uh, if you think of a technology, a technological trend that you think will have a massive impact or that you're very interested in, in seeing, what what would that be? Asia. In the sense of the technology, it's, it's not so advanced at the moment. I, I think like there are a lot of good developers in, in the space, but like all the new things like, are always come from uh, mainly on the US or, or sometimes in, in Europe. But like, like if you ask me about all the global trend, uh, definitely this year, the theme for this year will be um, um, machine learning or like artificial intelligence. Every single big company is working towards this uh, really uh, AI trend. Every year there is a, is, a, is a main theme for different tech. I mean, a, like a few years ago was big data, everyone talking about big data. If you look at like uh, all the other tech stuff um, that happens, like IoT, like, mm. like uh, Internet of Things, it was quite big, like, but like this year, everyone's just talking about like AI, 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 and machine learning. So, so I think like in the coming next two or three years, this is going to be like a focus. And then uh, we are seeing more companies, uh, even not just Hong Kong, uh, are looking into this space as well because uh, it's a lot of the automation that can be done, and uh, it is also getting more, much more accessible to like programmers or even any anyone because a uh, big company like uh, IBM, Oracle, uh, Microsoft are building some stuff like for business use. So you don't need to be uh, like a data scientist or like you don't need to earn a PhD in order to, to actually generate mm. some insights uh, from, from the data that you have got already. If you had like one wish free where you could say, oh, this technology or product, I would like to use that for my company or for myself, personal use, like, yeah. what direction would that be? What kind of product, what kind of technology would that be? I mainly work in the automobile, like, like mobility space. Um, autonomous driving is something like, definitely I, I will use it because uh, it is the trend. I mean, like people are building self-driving cars, but and I can see that. Well, I think within five years' time, like becomes uh, it would become much safer and also much more accessible to anyone. It's also quite quite a big thing for car sharing. If a self-driving car actually works, then uh, basically when you are not using a car, you can just not just renting it out for someone to drive, but like actually become like a uh, autonomous taxi. It actually, we change the whole thing about how you own a car. As you said, like. In Germany, yeah. uh, you need to own a car for utility, but now every car can become like a taxi. Mm. Yeah. So, do you see that happening in Hong Kong in the near future? Autonomous it? driving, um, the the research and development definitely is not in in Asia. I mean, like mainly Silicon Valley uh, and also uh, some part of Europe. Uh, I mean, like UK and Germany, of course. And I think big manufacturers are, are, are investing in and researching into this field. Tesla is already trying to do all this autopilot and cool stuff. All this development definitely not happening in Hong Kong. Singapore is something that um, is, is, is a country that really innovating. So uh, even on autonomous driving, they, they are catching up. And so people are setting up companies there. And they already have like a self-driving taxi in one of their science parts. So uh, in Hong Kong, 
the focus is definitely not on the research and development mm. side. It's more on how you apply technology. And also, Hong Kong is not a very big city. I mean, we have a lot of people, like 8 million like, citizens, but, uh, uh, but compared to like, China, it's very different. I mean, it's just a really small city. Yeah, so I think there, there are a lot of cool stuff going on in this city. But like, I think in general, if you are an entrepreneur or a startup, you will start in here. But like trying to think about where else you can apply your, your technology on. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always fascinated if somebody says, like, Hong Kong is a small city. I mean, Berlin yeah. has about 3.5 million, I think, now. Yeah, it's yeah. the biggest city in Germany by oh, far. Okay, okay. One of the biggest cities in Europe. Yeah, yeah, so sure. that's a kind of the interesting perspective, James. Yeah. Then. Uh, but what, what about places around Hong Kong, like Taiwan, for example? Yeah. Is, is that a place where innovation happens? It has the potential because they already have a lot of. Uh, knowledge and the factories on uh, on hardware and electronic stuff. They do have a lot of uh, hard technology with the country. I think in terms of talent, they are growing. They have around 100 universities, really? something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they have quite a lot of universities wow. like, compared to other countries. They do have a problem about how to get um, the young people into the right job and having a, a decent standard of living. So uh, Taiwan's good standard of living, like good place to go or? yeah I think definitely like, like Taiwan is uh, it's a very nice place like really beautiful country and like really nice people but uh, most of the the really mature business mm. are already really big corporates so I mean the startups are trying to grow there but uh, I, I would say it's a generation gap problem there are Taiwanese banks as well as like the government and the big corporates uh, they know what is startups they kind of know what is happening but they didn't know the potential mm. about how they can incorporate like this kind of new generation of uh, technologies and new people talents into their company. There is some resistance between like big corporates adopting new technologies and stuff. This problem of big corporate and government not really understanding, maybe not providing the perfect environment. I think that we see it around the world. It's yeah. a bit changing. The government are like, oh, startups are somehow important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But imagine you would be a prime minister yeah. or like leading a government. Yeah. What, what what would be things that you would change to provide better support to startups? Innovation is not something like, oh, okay, this year main theme is AI. You send someone to take a course or like a weekend <laughs> course to understand what's happening and then you would know it. If I'm the leader, I would definitely try to basically have someone who are knowledgeable in different space, in technology space especially, to plan about how the city can adopt this in the future. So, I mean, if you are taking reference for uh, Singapore, I mean, uh, their prime minister already like, officially saying that, yeah, we, we, we want to be a data-centric like, economy and also like a country. And then we are going to basically uh, educate and also train a thousand data scientists so I think if they are committed to this to this kind of thing, that is good. So they, they are finding ways to, to keep talent. And I think it's similar in Hong Kong, because Hong Kong do have a lot of like, great talent. But because of policy, of, the leaders do not really plan for how Hong Kong can adopt all these new trends and to, to take advantage of these kind of technologies. Hong Kong has been a financial hub in Asia for, for a very long time. Yeah. Say FinTech, if Hong Kong already has a good reputation uh, and then also have talents in this domain, then why not the government can uh, spend more resources or not just on education, but like to adopt new stuff like blockchain technologies mm. and all the um, like payment channels. And it's really hard to force a whole city of changing something. But look at India, like if your policy is strong enough, they can basically eliminate cash if you want to. They try to like make everyone to do like cashless payment. I think it really depends the leaders, how, how far they look at the city and uh, how willing they are going to take risks to change. Definitely, I mean, making changes is risky. I make software every time there are bugs. I mean, there are, are, are mistakes that you, you make. You mentioned the government having a strong plan, like taking risk. I think, if, especially when it comes to India, I'm a bit critical because uh, I think that is a case where um, like taking like cash out of the yeah, economy yeah. like and just saying like, oh, you can't use that bills anymore from yeah. one day to another, uh, that was where a lot of people said this was badly planned yeah, and yeah, it yeah. caused a sure, lot of sure. harm to the economy, especially to people with lower income. There are economies and there are societies that are a bit more guided and there are economies and societies where it's easier to do 
things on your own to decide. So what kind of society, what kind of environment do you think, or do you say, would an entrepreneur need? There are quite a lot of factors. I mean, like, one is um, how, how government plays the role. I mean, like, whether they are willing to support, to just let the innovation grow by itself, and if something really bad happens, then you stop it, yeah, and try to intervene. And similarly, I think Hong Kong financial system doing something similar. Like, I think the, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority do something similar. Like, they, they kind of free hands on, like, uh, a lot of things. And the other side is on how the communities in, in, the, in, in the city mm -hmm. will be like. Hong Kong is, is slowly adopting the whole startup culture and young people can choose to do something they like or, like, they, they can work on something that, that they think is possible mm -hmm. and potential become a good business. I mean, no matter it's a seed or not, in the end, uh, it, at least there are culture for people accept that, okay, these young people should try. In the Chinese culture, there has been like older generation expect you, okay, you should find something stable. Yeah. So you would advocate more like a pioneering lifestyle. So for saying, for example, if there would be a, a startup entrepreneur from Germany or some place else in Europe, yeah. come to you and ask, Lawrence, I want to do startup business in Asia. Yeah. Like, where should I go and what should I, like, Keep as a good advice, what would you say? Well, I, I definitely encourage an, anyone outside from Hong Kong to try to come to Hong Kong in this city. The advice I would give is um, really have an understanding of what markets and the uh, audience and the market dynamics you want to tackle with. The first place to start in Hong Kong is good maybe because of the infrastructure with really good Wi-Fi, really high-speed internet, like uh, on transportation, uh, uh, quality of life is very nice. But uh, it could be expensive as well to, to start in Hong Kong. So other places like Singapore, um, Kuala Lumpur and uh, Bangkok is also nice places for anyone outside Asia to try to come. Yeah. Okay, thanks Lawrence yeah, for no being problem. with us today. Um, thanks for the interesting talk. Hope to see you again soon. And to our audience, thanks very much for being with us today. Keep being drivers of innovation. Until next time.